In your headlines, TCIG holds multi-sectoral meetings with Bankers Association. Premier speaks to Crown Land and Housing. And vaccination rate projected to spike due to U.S. ban of the unvaccinated. Hello Turks and Kickers, thank you for joining us for another edition of Newswatch. It's Tuesday, October 26, 2021. I'm Latoya Walken and Newswatch starts now. The government is looking to enhance security around banks across the country. The first step towards the initiative was a multi-sectoral meeting with the police and the banking association. Here are the details in Tuesday's leading story. That meeting was held last Tuesday in Providence, Yalich with the goal of coming up with a plan to improve customer service and enhance security. Joining the acting governor and the premier were the executive team of the police force, members of the TCI Banking Association, and the deputy governor and minister of finance. A statement released following the meeting notes that insights were given into the investigation of recent criminal activities in the islands that are believed to be linked to banking activities the most recent of which was the killing of beloved man of the soil Alpheus Gardiner, who was accosted and subsequently shot to his stomach by bandits who reportedly followed him after he left the bank. A commitment was thereby made between the banking association and the police force to strengthen their investigative measures in hopes of creating better outcomes and a faster resolution rate. Both parties are very concerned for the safety of the general public and plan to have more frequent dialogue on clientele safety and other matters going forward. The acting governor, Anya Williams, reiterated the importance and the need for banks, commercial banks especially, to improve the security arrangements for their operation, as well as the technical and human resources needed to prevent long lines which can contribute to vulnerability of customers to opportunistic criminals for targeted crime. Williams also highlighted the importance of the mandatory vetting process for both security and bank personnel before being hired. The acting commissioner of police, Kendall Grant, promised to increase patrols in and around the vicinity of banking facilities during the day and evening to reinforce security and boost customer confidence in banking security in the islands. Discussions were also held around the issue of customer service, family island operations, and the need to establish an automated clearinghouse. This is a service that would allow local banking systems to speak to each other through technology, clear checks the same day, and better allow transfer of funds between banks. The government explained to the association that customer service in banks have drastically decreased in the past few years. The acting governor stressed the need to improve and return services to the islands of North and South Caicos. Scotiabank executives were also asked to review the agreement made for services on Grand Turk. The deputy premier Erwin J. Saunders assured the association of the government's eagerness to assist in whichever way is needed to enhance technology for the banking sector. President of the Banking Association and branch manager for the Royal Bank of Canada, Marcus Samuel, welcomed all of the ideas and concerns expressed by the government. Samuel also explained the bank's mandate to increase promotion of cashless banking and the use of technologies available to help safeguard the customer experience. He further explained that the association will need the help of the government to increase public education on the benefits of banking technology and the bank's plan to make it more affordable for its retail customers. Rounding off the meeting, the Premier explained, according to the press statement, the strong position his administration is taking as it relates to crime and banking services in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Representation from the banking sector included CIBC First Caribbean, Scotiabank, Royal Bank of Canada, Turks and Caicos Banking, Bordier Bank, and British Caribbean Bank. For PDV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. A hot topic emerging from the latest press update from the Premier Honorable Charles Washington Mizik was the issue of Crown Land and Housing.
take a look. I know a lot of people are anxious to know what is happening with land, particularly residential land. Uh, people are anxious because they want to be able to get access to Crown land, their land, to be able to build their homes and uh, without having to stick, get somebody stick their hands in a garbage bag and take out a, take a number. We've done a lot of work on that. Things are progressing nicely. Um, there's always, there's already been agreement that that system is unworkable. Uh, and we're in the process to have a comprehensive plan for reforming that. Uh, as we speak at the moment, a term of, terms of reference are being developed for the appointment of two consultants, one by the Turks and Caicos Islands government and the other one by the FCDO to fine tune the work that has already been done, but also to take a holistic view, a very practical view as to how Crown land is to be handled in the future. Premier Mizik also explained that a housing department has been set up and it is his government's plan to build communities. Uh, what I can tell you also that we are working on parallel lines or streams to preempt uh, and to be able to get a, a quick jump on the way forward through the Ministry of Physical Planning uh, and Infrastructure. Uh, we have set up a housing department within that ministry uh, and the, we had a meeting yesterday, the housing department that is making tremendous strides. Our plan is to do, to build communities. Uh, our, we said clearly in our manifesto that we are not about giving people a piece of dirt without roads, without water, without electricity, uh, and without cable. Right. We are here to build communities, and we are going to require some of us to change our cultural outlook. It was also noted to achieve such an ambitious stride, all stakeholders will need to play a critical role. I want to be able to deliver keys to people, right, a complete community rather than a piece of dirt. And that is going to require a partnership with the private sector, and with uh, potential homeowners and with financial institutions uh, to make sure and that uh, we all come together and provide housing, um, a combination of which will be socials, some will be ownership, and some, but everyone in the country, and I said over and over, who has a legal right to be here deserves adequate housing. It can't be a five-star destination unless that happens. It's time for a quick break. More news watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to News Watch. In two short weeks, visitors will no longer be able to enter the United States without proof of vaccination against the COVID-19 virus. Sources say this should bring about a vaccination spike just in time for the holidays. Take a look. 
November 8th will see the implementation of a no-entry order for unvaccinated adult visitors to the United States. The strict mandate speaks to prohibited entry for nearly all international visitors and testing for residents vaccinated or not. Heads of other countries, specifically the Caribbean region, from which persons normally flock to the U.S. for a vacation, are of the impression that the implementation of this new mandate may see an uptick in vaccinations. Certainly good news for our local Ministry of Health officials, who just last week shared that they are not looking to make the vaccine mandatory, as vaccination numbers are, though, slowly, steadily climbing. The U.S. is instating the vaccine requirement for all international travelers with just a few exceptions, which include persons under the age of 18, persons with official medical reasons, those traveling for emergency and medical care, and those on non-tourist visas from countries with low vaccine availability, which officials say may be as many as 50 countries. Further, persons will be required to show proof of vaccination status through a legitimate source like a digital copy of your vaccine certificate, noting that only medication approved by the FDA will be accepted. And not everyone is out of the woods. Unvaccinated U.S. citizens will require a test a day prior to travel, and fully vaccinated Americans must still be tested three days prior to travel. Testing still does not apply to children under the age of two. Persons between the ages two and 18 are required to take a test three days prior to departure to the U.S. if traveling with a vaccinated adult. Persons may begin to flock down to their local clinicians to have the jab following the news of this new U.S. mandate should note that one is only considered fully vaccinated two weeks after their second dose in a two-dose series, such as the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines, or two weeks after a single-dose vaccine, such as the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Unvaccinated TCI residents are still required to be tested and quarantined for seven days after arrival in country. A quick break now. More news watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providence Chalice, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Gillies Enterprises Provo Premier League continued over the weekend. On Sunday, the Academy Eagles lost their second straight game of the season to Beaches FC. A 3-2 outcome means that the Eagles are now in third place. Beaches FC, on the other hand, has been gaining ground in the tournament. Their stunning fourth straight game win have placed them in second place, just in time to play the league's current number one team, the SWA Sharks this Saturday at 8.30 p.m. A final score of 4-0 against Teachers FC has given Blue Hills FC their fifth game win of the season. The game to watch was Sunday's game between the SWA Sharks and Flamingos FC. A 5-0 defeat for Flamingo FC means that SWA Sharks get to hold on to their spot at the very top of the leaderboard. Junior Paul also scored his second hat trick for the season. This makes him the league's current top goal scorer. Competition continues to be at an all-time high with four games to go for each team until the end of the season. We'll continue to bring you the latest as the Aperture title progresses. For your sports authority, I'm Leek Harvey. Mixed weather patterns across the Turks and Caicos Islands this year weather forecast for October 27, 2021. Starting in Grand Turk on Wednesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 85, low 79, winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. South Caicos on Wednesday, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 79, winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. 
North and Middle Caicos on Wednesday, partly cloudy skies, high 86, low 79. Winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Parrot and Pine Cue on Wednesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 86, low 79. Winds west southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And on Providenciales on Wednesday, intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 86, low 79. Winds west southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Time now for your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise at 6.51 a.m., sunset at 6.16 p.m. And for your high tides and low tides, high tides 12.28 a.m., 12.50 p.m. Low tides 6.20 a.m., 7.24 p.m. Time now for your hurricane outlook. For the North Atlantic Caribbean Sea in the Gulf of Mexico, a deepening non-tropical low pressure system with storm force winds is located about 400 miles east-northeast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. This low is forecast to move north northeastward today and there is a brief chance of it acquiring some limited subtropical characteristics before it merges with another frontal system. The extratropical low is then expected to meander off the mid-Atlantic and northeast U.S. coast tonight and Wednesday, bringing rain and wind impacts to portions of those areas. After that time, the low is expected to move eastward away from the U.S. coast and could again acquire some subtropical characteristics while it moves eastward or southeastward over the warmer waters of the central Atlantic. And that's it for your weather forecast and Hurricane Outlook. We'll be right back with more news watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to News Watch. Over in Jamaica, one of the TCI's closest neighbors, citizens are reeling at the news of a cult right in their own backyard. The alleged cult leader has since been killed while on his way to answer to murder charges. Take a look. Cults are usually things we associate with American culture, and even with the one incident of cult activity in this part of the world. That's the Jim Jones saga in Guyana. Jones himself was American, and his congregation, also American. But two Sundays ago, the citizens of Jamaica were shocked when constabulary police responded to reports of ritualized killings at a church. That church is the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Church in the town of Albion, outside of the resort town of Montego Bay. The Jamaica Observer reported last week that the throats of two members of the church were cut during the ritual and a third person was killed in a confrontation with the police, who said they were fired upon as they approached the premises. There was um, one, there was a situation where a religious group, or what we, we would describe as a cult, called in members from all over the island to gather at this location. Mm -hmm. uh, during the whole process, some persons were stabbed by other members of the group. Um, persons went to hospital. Police was called in. When the police came, the police was greeted with gunfire from the leader of the congregation. Behind us is uh, the scene of a it's pathways Pathways uh, International Church, where we had an incident last night. The, a, a congregant here, a member of this church, who had been injured, apparently when she chose to disobey some instructions given to her by, by the, the leaders of this organization, 
uh, reported to the police that she had been injured and other information that led us to believe that the persons here were at risk. We're aware that uh, 144 congregants had been told to come here, uh, to meet here. And on responding to that report from the person who was injured and coming here, the first teams of police that arrived were shot at. And so they waited on reinforcements to come. Uh, we were very concerned that some form of uh, ritualized killing was going to take place here. And so we did an entry last night. 42 members of the congregation, 31 women and 11 men, as well as 14 children were taken into custody. The children were placed in state care. While the women and seven of the men were charged with breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Act and granted bail. Four of the men, including the organization's pastor, Kevin O. Smith, remained in custody. The other two were released. Smith was to have been charged with murder this week. However, on his way to court on Monday morning, the police vehicle in which he was traveling in was involved in a three-vehicle crash. Smith and a policeman were killed, while two other cops were critically injured in the incident, which occurred at about 9.30 a.m. Jamaican police have since identified the dead cop as 26-year-old Constable Orlando Irons of the Montego Bay Fugitive Apprehension Team. He and Smith were in a blue Toyota Corolla when it overturned. Over the past week, Jamaicans online expressed their shock and dismay at the discovery of the cult organization and the sadistic, ungodly acts in which they were involved. Yesterday, little sympathy was shown for the fate of the alleged cult dealer, with many calling it swift karma. One of the four men who were in custody with Smith was charged with murder yesterday. He has been identified as Andre Ruddock. Tanika Gardiner, a 39-year-old woman, and an unidentified man were found at the church in Albion Meadows. Their throats were slashed. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. That's a wrap for today's newscast. Join us again tomorrow and every weekday at 6.30 p.m. for more News Watch. And connect with us by visiting our website at www.ptvatci.com. We'll be walking reporting until next time.